Hi, it's nice to be back here. Last time I was here was in 2005, so I'm happy to be back on campus. A few gray hair later, obviously, I'm happy to share about my rebirth. My rebirth came out of discomfort. It has been an interesting journey for me. The most notable discomfort that I'm going to share with you today was my divorce. In 2017, my daughter at that time was 15 months old. I went through with the divorce. It was devastating. It was difficult. As a single parent with a toddler, I did not know what my life was going to be like. I just knew that things were going to be different. I don't know how that different is going to be. I just knew that it was going to be life-changing. I moved out with my daughter from the marital home to an apartment. And I knew that I just have to deal with it and do the best I can. My divorce became final in 2018. And at that time, I felt so stagnant. I felt so lost. I felt like I have yet to reach my full potential. At the same time, as a single income earner, I was battling this idea of wanting to maximize my income. Maybe I was toying around with the idea of finding a better paying job, but I've always had this drive to become an entrepreneur. I just did not know where to start. In my mind at the time, starting a business means coming up with a great idea, something novel, something disruptive, something that would change people's lives, and something that would be valued at a billion dollars like a tech unicorn. Lofty goals, I know. I had this random flashback moment from 2010 and it was a conversation that I had with one of my coworkers. She's like this motherly figure. She has three daughters. Her oldest daughter is my age. Being an overachiever, I was frustrated with many things. And she said this to me in a very calm voice. You can't eat an elephant all in one sitting. You have to segment it in bite-sized chunks. At that time, this spring chicken did not know what that meant. But now I know that she was right. Wouldn't it be nice if success is like instant noodles? Prop open the bowl, put some seasoning, add some hot water, close the lid, let that thing steep for 30 seconds, and voila, you have success. Unfortunately, it's not like that. In December 2018, as an effort to segment off that large elephant, I wrote down a list of things that I would like to accomplish in 2019. Pursuing my MBA was on that list. Of course, I wrote things down, but during the decision-making process, I was battling with a lot of things. There were many things that would come up. Excuses such as time limitation, how am I supposed to juggle a full-time career, having a toddler, and also figuring out when I could take classes? I thought to myself, okay, two days a week, I don't have my daughter with me. So I could probably just go to the in-person classes during those two days 
and see how that goes. And then another insecurity popped up. 36 years old, going into an MBA. Will I be the oldest one in class? I happened to see something on social media about women that became successful and started their businesses after their 40. Martha Stewart, Tori Burge, Fira Wang, just to name a few. I thought to myself, okay, here's my goal. I will do my MBA. Hopefully I can graduate by the time I'm 40. Just like those women, maybe I'll have a chance and start my business when I'm 40, 41, we'll see. Financially, it's also daunting. It's very daunting to be a sole income earner to figure out how am I going to pay for my tuition? So I spent a lot of hours with my best friend, Excel spreadsheet. I was just divvying up non-discretionary versus discretionary expenses. I was able to find less expensive phone plan, less expensive internet plan. I even went as far as trading down to white cauliflower, less expensive option than its fancier siblings, purple and orange cauliflower. Instead of getting Instagrammable oat milk lattes from cafes, I decided to get a frother for a dollar and make my own oat milk lattes at home. I also sold my wedding and engagement ring. I had to let go of my past in order to create my future. Non-discretionary expense is very interesting thing. I was able to figure things out and I was able to come to terms and cut back on costs. But discretionary expense on the other hand was something else. I've always liked to put together outfits. I like to look presentable. My life's already chaotic. I need to look good to feel good. A good friend of mine introduced me to this world, great world of, of thrifting. She used to brag about her finds and tells me all about the great things that she found. And I was always impressed. I was always like, oh my gosh, how can she find all these great things? Because of my upbringing, culturally, it's frowned upon to consume secondhand goods. It was a no-no unless one is really underprivileged. Well, I have been noticing great finds from my friend and also great pieces, mid-century modern furniture and home furnishings. The rebel in me broke the norm. I started flirting with mid-century furniture and home furnishings and dabbling and filling my home with those great items. One day I was shopping for mid-century modern furniture and came across this gorgeous lilac Irish tweed cape. I fell in love with the cape. I bought it. It's been a game changer since. I got hooked on vintage fashion. My day job, I work in tech sales and I work with venture capitalists and startup founders. I figured out and I had this aha moment. Well, if I can be sustainably bougie on a budget and I get stopped by strangers complimenting my outfits, why can't I just start my own business? I started small. I started selling vintage fashion last year on Etsy. Every time the app makes a cha-ching sound, I get super excited. 
And then after that, I figured, well, I have done trunk shows before and I have done pop-ups before in my past life. Well, let's try pop-ups, why not? These are outdoors, minimally low risk, even during the pandemic. I did that. So my daughter would be playing in the driveway about seven feet away from me while I'm trying to play this game of Tetris, packing my car with fixtures like rolling racks, folding tables, filling it up all the way up to the brim with inventory. It's fun. At the pop-ups, I like to interact with the customers. I love it. I love it when they find something that they love, when they thought that whatever that I sold them is the best thing. I just get enjoyment out of that. And during the pop-ups, I would be on my feet for 10 hours a day. And I've gotten about six to eight hours without any bathroom breaks. Who cares about bathroom breaks anyways, when one is trying to GSD? GSD is what I live by. And that stands for getting stuff done. At least that's the PG-13 version of it. I don't need bathroom breaks when I'm trying to GSD. In this context, it means getting sales done. As an effort to grow my business, I learn that I have to be more present on social media. Gen Z's loves TikTok. Well, this geriatric millennial decided I have to get on TikTok. Why not? I mentioned earlier my day job in sales, in tech sales. I have to do cold outreach. I have been rejected. I actually eat rejection for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I get ignored daily. But for whatever reason, putting myself out there on TikTok has been, was very daunting. Who am I to be on TikTok? I'm older, first of all. I'm not like Tinks, a famous TikTok influencer in California. She's gorgeous and skinny. I'm not a Kardashian. I'm just a suburban mother in Massachusetts. Well, I started dipping my toes with TikTok when I'm making styling videos. How to style a blazer multiple ways. Coincidentally, I happen to have a great roommate who's seven and she has provided me with constructive feedback regarding my TikTok videos. I would tell her to be like, can you please be quiet for a few minutes? Mommy's filming this TikTok video. She was like, okay. She would be playing in the same room about five feet away from me. And after I finished recording it, she said, Mommy, no offense. You said the word cool way too many times. When you said, I got these earrings yesterday, when was yesterday? You have to be more specific. It was yesterday, actually last week, last month. Your viewers wouldn't know what that meant. Oh boy, she was right. <laughs> I started improving my TikTok content and got over the fear. On a nice day, I would be in my driveway with a tripod, twirling around, showing the world my outfit. And by the way, I live on a busy street. I've gotten strange looks from passerbys. I've gotten cat called before, but I don't care anymore. I've conquered my fears. And most importantly, I don't use the word cool more than once within a video. I'm sharing my journey with you about my rebirth, not because I'm a major founder with a major exit, 
I'm still in the midst of it. I'm still figuring things out as a solopreneur. I'm about to take that big leap of faith and transitioning out of my day job and working part-time and pursuing my business full-time. It's scary. But I would not know what the outcome would be if I didn't give it a shot. Conquering my fear, taking actions a little at a time has opened up so many doors for me. You know that saying, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We've all heard that, right? Well, I'm not a fan of that saying. It's very passive. The active way of that saying is to take a blowtorch when there's no light for you at the end of the tunnel. I took the blowtorch and created a light for myself. But I was also having fun with it by making creme brulee at the same time. When you're going home today, what are you going to do to create your own light? Thank you.